So this is the kind of our, our last session where there's a topic. It's called, when the mind is completely pure, thoughts become the reality of your choice. There's an expression, I think it's quite important here, um, which is, only a powerful soul can offer love. And this is a statement that was made about a woman by the name of Dadi Prakashmani, who was the head of the Brahma Kumaris for about 40 years. And um, she was, um, I think, in terms of leadership and in terms of a person who could really hold power and wield power and everyone adored her, still <coughs> do, though she left the body some time ago, quite some time ago. And um, we've been talking about power and purity and uh, I think that um, the process of coming into your power and filling with that energy from the source beyond um, means that the heart can take over from everything without causing any any problems because there is something called the heart's desire which means when, when the soul is not full then it's hungry and there are desires but when the soul is full with that energy full full light then um, then the heart does everything because there's no further internal conflict in the spirit because the hungry heart will desire that which isn't there and look for it in the material world <coughs> because it's not got enough strength to go to the source and this is where all the difficulties, suffering, mistakes and so on and so forth uh, happen and this is why it says to us in the Bhagavad Gita that um, your sense perceptions are deceptive um, because the senses will show us attraction and repulsion, things we like, things we don't like. So the heart will go for what we like, what we are attracted to. But that attraction has this other side of deception because it will not give us what it promises or in the amount that it promises, it can't. Because this, uh, the source of our satisfaction, if we are spiritual, the source has to be spiritual, it can't be material. The material source will run out. So we make this distinction between the material and the physical and the um, soul who is depleted can't really be uh, held together in its integrity. So there is the need for striving, the need for tapasya <coughs> we talked about earlier. So we want to reach this point of fullness or 
sometimes people call it fulfillment, where you have what you had to have. So what did you have to have? Um, everything. <laughs> you had to have yourself. You had to have full information. You had to have full power. You had to understand everything and get everything. Then, okay, then everything is together, integrated, and you are one with yourself. And you are one with the Supreme Power. And you are one with the cosmos. And this is, of course, um, um, something that people feel is already there. Um, but because of loss of spiritual power, uh, there is this internal conflict within the cosmos, within the humanity, within the individual soul. And so we must fill with knowledge, with power, with attainments, and have everything in order to be satisfied. So this is where we go. going. Then, as that takes place, the heart knows what to do. And then there isn't the need to figure anything out because you just know. Do you like that? <laughs> and I think there's no need to assert your power. And because when you assert your power, um, sometimes people feel overwhelmed or um, taken over or something like this. But when you are just in your power, I suppose a nice image for that is a mountain. You are, I don't know, the biggest mountains I've flown over the top of is the Himalayas, but the biggest mountains I've sat in is the Andes. So they're, um, they're there. <laughs> So I like mountains because of the symbol, as a symbolic aspect that uh, you can't do anything about a mountain. It just is there, and it's beautiful, and uh, you can't argue with it. It's just there, and I think for us to come into our power is to be able to be just there. And um, I think love, many people wonder what is love, and uh, love is an um, extending of your energy, I think. Um, when people love when they're not full, they extend energy in order to get more and then they extend which means that there's overall loss of energy um, people love each other extend energy but get emptied out and uh, then the overall amount of love in the relationship is less and less and less. So one cannot um, amplify love like that. But if you are fully in your power and you are um, letting that flow constantly come in, then, you know, you're extending it because you're not reducing your energy and you're not um, loving in order to get something in exchange. Obviously the law of karma is very clear that whatever you extend that is positive 
there will be a positive return, no doubt. But um, being full means you can extend without expectation. Uh, that means you can be philanthropic, you know, really philanthropic. And a person who is really philanthropic is very happy because of um, the nature of the law of karma. You, you extend love continuously, you extend generosity continuously, but you don't get burned out, you don't get depleted, you don't get disappointed because there's no um, expectation. So you don't have to calculate anything. Then also there is the question of human suffering. We live in a world where there is human suffering. And the more we are loving, the more we are sensitive, the more we are distressed by human suffering. If you are a mountain, things happen on the mountain. Because nature is about life and death. Nature is about um, accidents. Or anything can happen. Conflict can happen. Human suffering happens. But if you are full, and um, you you see the spirit. You feed the spirit. Then you alleviate that human suffering, but you cannot um, control it. Because wherever there is human suffering, it's because there are the, these laws, the laws of karma happening, the laws of depletion happening. This is the nature of the world, the nature of the cosmos, that there is um, that side, the dark side. And we, as we work through our own pain, heartache, heartbreak, and um, assume all of it, include all of it, then there is a wholeness where we say uh, it has to be there when it's there and when it reaches its maximum, like anything, it goes away. There's also the nature of things. When it reaches the maximum, it's finished. So, in order for human suffering to finish, it does have to reach its maximum. And we would say, okay, it's there, right? And so, we can understand that it's finishing soon. But it's, I think, important for us to go to that peak with it and go beyond it uh, so that uh, we can contain it and mitigate it. Because the nature of the universe is like this. There is light and there is dark and the totality is overall light. Just like that. So in order for the love, this kind of love, to be applied in these circumstances, the love has to follow from your full power. It, it cannot be love that comes from only softness. It cannot be love that has expectation of return. 
because that's not strong enough. But the kind of love that can flow, or that does flow, from someone who is fully in their power is endless, you see. And this is why it is sometimes said, God is truth, or God is love. And both of those things are side by side. And so if we take in power, we take in truth, then we must also become a, a huge river of love that flows from that power. And then that becomes, uh, in, in a very important way, our function. Because the love is philanthropic, not desirous. Otherwise, love is um, a word which assumes giving, but which is a lot about taking. And um, then it's not love. It's desire, but it goes by the name of love. So love, um, where there's no desire, comes when you're fully in your power. And the soul who has emptied out, you know, in the meditation we did the last time, was a little bit about emptying out. What do we empty out from is... Um, our limited assumptions about things, how they should be, how they ought to be, all this type of thing. Um, because the ways of the, the universe of the spirit and matter are not easily understood by people and then many assumptions are made which are maybe not right and then you get disappointed and then you don't agree with what it is you know and um, but when you when you come into your power and you take the full power and you understand and have brought together within yourself and, and um, assumed your pain and your dark side, then it's integrated and you do not suffer. Uh, normally, many of you are in medical world, you think of pain as a bad thing. But um, in, in spirituality, as you go further and further, you find out that it's a very good thing. Um, because uh, it tells you very important things about yourself, about what it means to be. Uh, it's a messenger. And uh, ever since I went in this uh, former prison of, in, in South Africa and met the former terrorists <laughs> who said, uh, and I asked them, well, why are there no instruments of torture here? And they said, well, only people who are immune to torture end up in this prison. I said, immune to torture? Is that possible? He said, oh yeah. I said, really? I need to investigate this. Because at that time I used to have very severe migraines, so I was interested in what you do with pain. And yes, it is the case that Pain teaches you uh, how to assume it, how to include it to a point where it does not uh, hurt you because you can uh, 
not only take it, but you welcome it and it carries you through beyond these thresholds, beyond these limitations and then you understand something kind of important about what it means to be human and then you can be compassionate and there's another example of that that I can also share which might be quite revealing there was one TV cameraman in the, when there was the war in Cambodia and he had to see things that you shouldn't have to see what happens to women, what happens to children, what happens to men in war uh, of extreme and intense uh, pain and his only way that he could deal with it is to become totally and completely loving and then it wasn't an attribute of you know struggle or dichotomy or one side good one side bad but everything became one in a beautiful and harmonious way and the things that cause us distress all of us uh, become um, just included and they vanish <coughs> so when things reach to an extreme point as they have as they are um, we must be willing to go with it until it passes that extreme point so we can come to the other side of it where um, it is no longer a matter of antagonism because you always fight pain and resist pain and as you do that it increases and increases and increases until it reaches its peak and either it vanishes or you vanish now you can't vanish because you're an imperishable being so therefore you must go to the limit, past the limit and find the um, serenity Then you can love genuinely, fully, endlessly, completely, compassionately and this is really philanthropy. So that means that you don't need to um, consult your conscience anymore because the heart knows at all times what to do, how to do, etc. Then you can just be heart because you have passed the limits and, and that is um, there's an attainment, a very big attainment and it's a great uh, eye-opener and that after that there is no fear uh, and another expression for for love is love is letting go of fear I don't know if you know that one but this was um, the motto of a cancer care uh, uh, place in California many years ago where they would teach the cancer sufferers children mostly uh, how to go past all this pain, loss, death uh, 
disintegration, all of these things. And uh, then we are outside the, the limitations of being human that make us what is called as only human. And instead of being only human, we can be then something like truly human, which is very different. And so the heart, which doesn't have emptiness, which doesn't have desires, which is full, uh, is aligned with the greater energies of the world and you are at one with it all. So that in a, a world where people are naturally like that, um, everything is in flow and your sensitivity is to a point where uh, you know what everyone is feeling, you know what everyone is thinking, uh, everyone is open, transparent, uh, at one with each other without the need to close off. Uh, it's a different type of world, but that is achieved through uh, going past these limits. And, and it's a kind of transcendent or, or a, a transfigured state, you know. And, and I think that that is really what yoga leads to. So then if you apply that thought to this desire that was stated at the beginning of our time together this weekend, I want to know my soul's purity, right? And when you get to there, then you know what it is to be independent of these pairs of opposites. We practice to spin them, to be in equilibrium with them, but ultimately we reach a point where they no longer exist because everything is um, in perfect harmony because we have crossed the threshold of pain, the fear of death, the, in a sense, the individuation of um, distinguishing between ourselves and someone else. <coughs> and uh, that, is a, that is a harmony. And that can hold for a good while but ultimately, as in every machine, it slows down and it begins to fall apart. But this practice of um, restoring ourselves to our original state of um, purity and fullness um, is strong enough to create a world like that. How many people does it take to reach that level so that the world can be um, like that? Not very many is needed. Because it's a very powerful influence. But in order to, to get that, our practice is to see what am I influenced by, what am I limited by, what do I need to do to get past it and to be completely full. And so we use our time, our energy and so on to, to do this. And there is a strong, yeah. big impact. So think about how powerful you are and how much love is extended by your being powerful and how much 
your power makes you beyond those things that limit a person. Pain, death, all, all the things, injustice, etc., etc. All of that um, kind of vanishes when you are fully in your power because your influence of being in integrity is greater than that, and that's called spiritual power. So, um, still it takes time to reach that kind of point, and it also means, you know, we have to go through the experience of feeling it and seeing it and um, being powerless in front of it, you know? And so the times of feeling a struggle and the times of um, feeling disconnected, the times where you don't think it's possible or you despair or you think you failed or you can't make it or it's too much or it makes you go insane, it can. Um, we go through those, you see, and once you go through something, you know it. And this um, knowing of the dark part intensifies your capacity for compassion, which means for love. Um, because there you are in a circumstance where there's absolutely nothing you can do and you have to surrender and in that you um, you transcend uh, because you're no longer resisting. So the the purpose of existence then becomes to love, which means to be this endless conduit. So just as uh, in nature there's this constant cycling, this constant movement of air and water and earth and fire and all of this, so, in, on the spiritual level, there is this constant flowing, together with the flowing of nature, this constant flowing of your light, and your peace, your purity, your love, your strength, your uh, wisdom. And it all becomes um, a part of a great whole that flows, and you are at one with it all. And so we're going from the state of being not at one with it, we're at odds with it, we're at odds with ourselves, we're at odds with each other. What purity means to go from that state of being at odds to the state of being at one. And that, that's um, more than people anticipate, actually. No? But uh, that is the meaning of taking the spiritual uh, laws to the maximum. And then you, you kind of hold yourself and everything and everyone else in balance. And that balance holds for a good while. And then, like anything, it eventually loses power. So, every so often in the uh, time of our existence, through the big cycles of time, every so often we have to do this. Which means, every so often we have done this. Which means, we have succeeded.
which means it will work. And you will do it. Because you did it. So you will do it. This is your function, this is your identity, this is your speciality, this is your, your meaning. And so, when you look at yourself that, oh, I am for this? Really? But some voice comes and says, yes, you are for this, so continue. Then you say, oh, okay, I can relax. <laughs> no? Does that make sense to you? And then all the difficulties become like worth it. And uh, you become ready because uh, it's um, about understanding how how things work, how they work again and again in the same way, uh, with the same people. And so when you're asking yourself, who am I? You can also say, uh, I am one who does this. And so then you say, wow, am I? Okay, <laughs> I must do know that, you know? So, that's special. And it's not um, a fantasy, it's logic, but yet it's very extraordinary. When you go into yourself, in the soul, there is something in the soul which is called sanskaras. Some of you may know this word. So the sanskaras are like imprints, patterns in the soul that are there always and they get activated at different times. And so if you have that imprint in you to do this, then when the time comes, then they start getting activated and then they do it. And you say, ooh, am I? can be. Then of course you doubt, naturally, and then you say, no, 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 that's not possible. And then you become again disconnected. Now because doubt, um, you have to have doubt, but you can't have doubt. <laughs> There's also a paradox. Um, you have to have doubt because you have to make sure that it is possible. And um, you have to have doubt so that you can check it and analyze it and look at it from every imaginable and unimaginable angle to try and prevent it from being so. And yet, when it becomes so, you say, hmm, that's, <coughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So it's just, um, there's something in you that uh, urges you to understand things, to um, grasp things, to make things be the way you feel they must be. And that urge won't let you go, is that right? And so you don't have any choice. And um, while it's difficult and, um, and takes you to your limits and makes you crazy, but eventually you you have to continue with it until it is there. And then there is this aspect of um, this concept of being an instrument. Because every soul has something they have to do. It's like you know, pieces on a chessboard. 
And sometimes you find yourself getting moved around without your free choice. Do you find that? And so it's like uh, we like to be in full command of whatever happens, but that every so often we get a notification that, by the way, <laughs> you're not. There's a destiny which has a very big power. There's a purposefulness in the universe, which is a very big power. And you are in it, you are part of it, so um, uh, you don't have any choice. And you say, okay. <laughs> of course we fight it. And of course we go against it, and we refuse, and we say, no, nah, not me. Why me? Not me. Uh, and then it knocks on your soul and says, yeah, you. Oh, but I don't have what it takes. It doesn't matter. You're just an instrument. You don't need to have what it takes. It will be made to happen. This kind of thing also happens. And so we have to come to terms with a paradox, really, of our own free will and of uh, a destiny that, that overrides it every so often. And then we um, have to come to terms that you know, we have to take big exams because we have to qualify, even if it's fixed, we still have to qualify. And so we have to take tests and it takes us to our limits. Do you experience that? Every so often it will just really take you to an unbearable limit that you cannot go to, but it pushes you. And you may also have to work with pain itself, emotional pain, financial pain, social pain, physical pain, many different kinds of deaths because it's necessary to know <coughs> pain inside and out and up and down to be able to um, have a positive relationship with it so that it is um, in included, it's part of and it's something that makes you wise and strong and humble. It's just very good. We need to be that. And, and then it's also very much about coming to terms with everything, because if we can't come to terms, our heart isn't flowing freely, and um, we block things because we haven't come to terms. But the coming to terms is part of it, and, uh, and also trusting the heart, because the heart means the core of your being. The core of your being is the purest place. And the analytical, theoretical part is there, but it's to be discarded when it's used by fate is done. You know, because when the heart is full and it knows what to do and it um, becomes a conduit and carries the energy and you are full and it is flowing and there is um, this natural um, openness between everyone and everything, then, um, then whatever happens is always right. And so you don't have to think or decide or figure out because it, it kind of knows what to do. And in such a case, then you become an innocent person. But you have to be very wise to qualify for innocence. You have to pass the hard <coughs> exams to qualify for innocence. It's a funny thing, but it's a part of the process that we go through. Does that make sense to you? 
So it's just all about holding something that is very large and that has um, all the different colors, the dark, the light, the we have to go beyond what should, could, would, should not, etc. And because that happens when we can see only from a certain angle. But um, uh, love for humanity is quite a big thing. And uh, what stops us having love for humanity is uh, some of our prejudices and preconceptions and different types of limitations. And um, they will come up. And then we have to decide, do you want to keep this or not? Because if you want to keep it, you won't qualify. You have to get past it. And that means work through it and uh, then uh, become free. Because one is not free when limited by preconception and prejudices. So, and these are part of our conditioning, part of our karma, part of so many things. But uh, all our process get us free from that. So then you, you just see, when you see another human being, you see the core of them. And, and yourself. So this is the aim. And this is balance. So you do love your heart, you trust your heart to the point where you can follow it, knowing that it takes you where you have to go, even if it looks crazy, but it's okay. So that's a good thing. So let's have some meditation. You go to heart. Which may be wounded. Which may be corrupted. which may have been betrayed which you go to your heart like a, a wounded healer who understands pain and what the world has to bear what people do to survive which goes against their conscience Sometimes the heart has betrayed its own self. Sold itself short. Sold out other people. Many things. Conscience has weight no one is perfect 
and the same heart, you open up. Put it in front of the light. You own the reality of your limitations, weaknesses. And you take strength. Keeping the heart open, taking light, taking strength. Allowing the light to clean everything. You grieve for yourself, yet all of that washes away in the light. You just allow all that to be what it is in the light. Does its work and the heart becomes golden? As the heart becomes clean and pure and light, You come to your realness, your purity is restoring. Your heart grows back, the winds. Slowly, gently, heal the pain melts, you become whole again. Just being open to the light giving your heart Allowing your heart to be cleaned. And take in strength. The heart can love. and bear can handle the stress the heart becomes true Because anyway, it's true. Lack of power falsified it. Taking light, taking strength. Then you can do what you couldn't do. You 
can be and which couldn't be. And the heart is restored. And you are a golden heart. The fire of that love. Cleans the heart, and burns out the impurities, the weaknesses, limitations, you become free, light. Infinitely flexible, pure gold, soft, shining like sunlight. Feel the waves of highest pure love you are immersed in that pure love it goes in deep to the very core of your spirit. There is a resonance, a vibration, so pure, like a soundless sound, so beautiful. That makes your heart being totally pure. Your heart becomes boundless. Like an ocean of liquid gold. All the pain of the world, violence of the world melts in that gold of your love. You return to your innocence. Deeply wise, knowing all things, yet innocent. Like a child, wise, like an ancient sage, your heart mm -hmm. is strong to bear all things and from your heart fountain springs forth made of light a 
which becomes the great river and courses around the world and touches every land and body of water wind, fire, the center of the earth, and all the people on it. Every soul is touched by that river of light that extends from your heart and the source of your love the great light beyond sustains you moves through you you are a conduit Receiving, transmitting, and as this energy passes through you, it brightens and lightens you. you become one with everything. Flowing. Radiating. The resonance reaches out far into the cosmos. And you experience quiet serenity. You are still like the source is still. You become love itself. infinite and infinitesimal beyond all limits
and gently let yourself return to your human form. Pure, peaceful, powerful, loving, and blissful being of light hidden in your physical form, emerging time to time, but otherwise hidden away. Shanti.